a father, father asked his son. Father asked his son, you know, his son was ready for marriage. He says to my son, what sort of wife do you want? He says to him, dad, I want a wife like the moon. MashaAllah, the sisters must be happy now. I'll turn their mic off for a sec. He said to him, what do you mean like the moon? He said to him, you know, like the moon. She shows up at night and disappears in the morning. <laughs> we ask Allah to give us wives like moon, inshallah. <laughs> Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Inna alhamdulillah nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa nusalli ala al-habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, my dear respected brothers. Subhanallah, it's been one year. One year since I stood before you last year. And I gave a talk, subhanAllah. Uh, one story that I want to mention, inshallah, just because I like mentioning it. And uh, Ibn Kathir mentions this story in the tafsir of Ayat al-Kursi. He mentions this story in the tafsir of Ayat al-Kursi. He says, some Jews came to Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and they asked Musa. They said to him, oh Musa, does Allah sleep? Does Allah sleep? So Musa couldn't answer then and there. So what happened was, two angels came to Musa alayhi salatu was salam. They came to Musa after a long day of da'wah. You know, a long day. And so they came to Musa and they gave Musa two bottles, two glass bottles or clay bottles. And they said to Musa, tonight, you have to stand all night and hold these glass bottles like that. But you can't let go of them. So Musa takes the bottles and, and he holds them. You know, the first half of the night, the first part of the night goes by and he's getting tired, his eyelids are getting heavy and he's, he's getting weak, he's exhausted, he wants to sleep. Second part of the night comes, they're getting heavier. Anyway, before you know it, Musa alayhi salatu was saying, falls asleep, he falls down and the, and the glass bottles, the clay bottles come crushing down. So the angels come back to Musa and say to him, Oh Musa, if Allah azza wa jal was to sleep for a second, the heavens would come crushing down to the earth like these glass bottles smash the floor. This is the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who never sleeps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's in control of everything. This is Allah Azza wa Jal. My dear respected brothers, the month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. It is a month like no other. So therefore we need to treat it like no other. You know, today we've, we've developed this culture. When it comes to the month of Ramadan, there's this poisonous culture has come along with it. You know, Ramadan now is about big iftars. MashaAllah, the hulu stores, they're open until late nights. It's the busiest time of the year for them. It's about going out, hanging out, camel burgers at night. It's about hang. This, this, Wallah al-Azim, I'm not speaking halal haram here. This is not Ramadan. Ramadan is when you and I get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is the month when you and I, we connect to the Quran. Ramadan is the month where you and I leave the stuff that's halal. It's halal for you. But you leave it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal so that you may attain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you will never reach the, 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 the state of birr till you leave that which you love most. Ramadan is not, it's not the month of playing cards with the boys. Ramadan is not, you know, going out and finding where there's a sausage sizzle and wherever. This, 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 this is not Ramadan, my brothers. Ramadan is when you become a spastic, you become a majnoon in your ibadah. You isolate yourself from everything and connect to Allah. You connect to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. You worship Allah in this month like you've never worshipped Him before. This is the month. If not now, Wallahi, then when? Then when? You know, some of us, we, we tend to think, oh, look, you know, I'm still young, I'm living. Brother, nothing guarantees you that you live to see the end of this Ramadan. I remember when I went to that, uh, what was the name of that big program they had? The race is on. So one of the brothers was saying there, he was saying, you know, look, subhanAllah, we, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's allowed us to see another Ramadan. Ramadan hadn't hit then. I think this was only about two, three weeks ago. Since then, four people I know have died. Four people have died. Ramadan came so close, yet so far. Yeah, Allah Azza wa Jal has allowed you to live to see Ramadan. To do what with it, my dear respected brothers? Wallahi, stay away from these big iftars and stay away from the ibadah, 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 ibadah. This is it. This is the month for it. This is the month of salah in the masjid, my dear respected brothers. 
This is the month you, you as a abid, you as a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should be connected to the house of Allah. This is the month you minimize your work. And you peak and you push and you pump it up when it comes towards the ibadah. To the masajid, we need to connect to the masajid. Your prayers should be in the masajid as much as you can. As much as you can. You know, I want to keep this talk positive, but wallahi, يعني, if, if a hadith, authentic a hadith that speak about the person who neglects the mas, neglects, neglects the prayers in the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ النَّاسُ مَا فِي الْعَتْمَةِ وَالصُبْحِ لَأَتَوْهُمَا وَلَوْ حَبْوَةِ Authentic hadith, my dear respected brothers, the Prophet of Allah, look at the encouragement he's giving us. He's telling us that if you knew, if you knew the reward of praying in the masjid, praying the night prayers, Fajr and Aisha, if you knew the reward of praying them in the masjid, you will go even if you had to crawl on your hands and knees. But the problem is, is we don't know the value of it. That's why he's saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if you knew, you would crawl. But you see, we don't know the reward. But I want to tell you something. I want you to imagine now that we made an announcement. We made an announcement here at the UMA or we made an announcement at La Kemba Masjid or Bilma Mosque, which any mosque. We made an announcement that every salah made in the masjid, we're going to give you $500 cash. All the brothers are already thinking, Lama, what's this trip on about? $500 cash. I want you to imagine the Imam of the masjid said $500 cash for every salah in the masjid. Who of us will miss the prayer? Who of us will ask you, but brother, is it fard or is it sunnah? Wallah al the non Muslims will come to the masjid. 500 bucks of prayer? Ah, my Islam's for me, man. Tell me what I gotta do. Because we know the value of $500. But you don't know the value of your salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says that that, you know, that's two rukah for fajr. That's two rukah, those, those, those little light. He says, that is worth more than the world and everything it contains. How many times have we heard this? But I want you to imagine that a brother bought a Mercedes Benz. He bought a Mercedes Benz yesterday. Huh? He bought a brand new Mercedes Benz yesterday, parked it in the driveway, and then the next morning he woke up and it was on fire. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? Oh, haram, what a mesquine. Lawalla, he could be a Jew, huh? You think, oh, that guy got it hard. But you and I have been missing the world and what it contains for the last 20 years and wallahi, it doesn't even bother you. Yet pieces of metal and glass wrapped up in some fancy leather, ah, oh, it burnt your heart. See, so we know the value of this, but we don't know the value of that, my dear respected brothers. So this is the month of ibadah. And one of the ibadahs that is neglected or generally neglected is the ibadah of dhikr. Dhikr, my dear respected brothers, the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal is ibadah. And the beautiful thing about dhikr is any other ibadah in Islam, any other ibadah in Islam needs intention. I need to have niyyah. I cannot pray unless I have niyyah for the salah. My wudu is invalid if there's no niyyah for it. But dhikr, niyyah, no niyyah, doesn't matter. Anytime you say it, ajr, rewards. Rewards. And it's so easy, man. You know, the calculator is clocking. Clock up the figures. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says in the authentic hadith, this is a beautiful hadith. Wallahi, it's small. He says, Kalimatan, khafifatan, ala lisan, thakilatan, filmizan, habibatan, illa rahman, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -abin. He says two words. They're light on the tongue, but they're heavy on the scales, and they're loved by the Rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -abin. How much time has passed us by? Huh? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -azim. Heavy on the scales. I heard a sheikh was giving a tafsir on it. He says, yani just how heavy? Are we speaking a couple of kilos? Are we speaking a couple of tons? Yani what's, what's heavy? He says, no matter how much you imagine it to be on the day of judgment, Allah is going to give you more than what you expected. Heavy on the scales. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the ascension, Isra al Ma'raj, when he went up, he met Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, and Ibrahim cut a long story short. He says, Give your ummah salam and tell them, O oh Muhammad, tell them that Jannah is, is it's a plain that's been divided. The soil is sweet. The water 
waters of it are sweet. And the soil of it is fertile. And tell them. This is a prophet giving us advice. He says, tell them that the plants in Jannah are subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. A tree for you in Jannah. We're not talking about the gum tree outside. A tree for you in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it will take an Arabian horse 100 years travel. He wouldn't cross the shadow of one tree. Waiting for you. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Ibadah, dhikr, dhikr. Dhikr. After every single prayer, five salawat, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says whoever recites Ayat al-Kursi, verse 255 from chapter 2, Surat al-Baqarah. Huh? He says, whoever recites this verse after his five fara'id prayers, the only thing that will stand between him and Jannah is death. Is death. Yani just die. And that's where you're going. Huh? Ayat al-Kursi. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the authentic hadith, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says the difference between he who remembers Allah, not the Muslim, the one, the difference between he, of course he has to be in a state of Islam, the one who remembers, the difference between the one who remembers Allah and the one that doesn't remember Allah azza wa jal, is like what example, my brothers? The living and the dead. The living and the dead. When Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, would, he would mount on his horse and march to the armies of the enemies at night on his own. Sahaba told him, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You can get killed. He said to them, did you not hear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that the difference between he who remembers Allah and he who doesn't is like the living and the dead? How can the dead harm the living? The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whenever a group of people come, whenever a group of people come to remember Allah azza wa jal, he says, verily four things will take place. He says, the rahmah, the sakina from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend. It will descend. Look already now, we've been what, talking about Allah for a couple of minutes and already you're, already you're flying. He says, the rahmah will descend and your sins will be forgiven and Allah will remember you in a better gathering. Gathering of whom? Gathering of angels. Today, if someone famous drops your name, you want the world to hear it. Fulan, Fulan mentioned my name. Oh, well, the brother was fantastic. He was in an interview and then the, you know, and the guy was asking him, <laughs> he said, Allah said, was fantastic. Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning your name right now. To who? He's mentioning them to angels, to the likes of Jibreel. And what an honor to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear respected brothers, this is the month, wallahi, yani the time is short and I need to leave you. Dhikr, dhikr, dhikr. So many authentic ahadith. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Whoever says this 100 times, 100 times is rewarded, is rewarded as if he freed 10 slaves, and 100 hasanat and 100 sayyat are taken away from him, and he is protected from shaitan until the evening. And nobody on that day, nobody on the face of the planet is better than him, except he who says it more. Except he who says it more. Imagine you got 10 bucks, man. 10 bucks for every time you said, Subhanallah. Wallah, you'd be a madman. Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Brother, what's wrong? Wallah, he won't answer. There's 10 bucks coming in. 10 bucks is coming in. Yeah, imagine what's waiting for us with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Making dhikr is, is Wallah, it's a special thing, my brothers. It's about being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? So please, inshallah, I want this month for you to be like a month like no other. You know, and I'll leave you with this. The Prophet of Allah says, 
that there are 12 sunan prayers in the day. 12 sunan prayers. Wallahi, if you're not doing them now in the month of Ramadan, then when are you going to do them? He says 12 sunan prayers. Two before Fajr. Two before Fajr. Four before Dhuhr. And two after Dhuhr. Yeah? Two before Fajr. Four before Dhuhr. Two after Dhuhr. Two after Maghrib. And two after Isha. He says whoever performs these ones, guaranteed for him is a palace in paradise. And you didn't pay a dollar for it. I don't want to boast, man, but when I prayed the now, I was like, yeah, palace in paradise. Allah, you might as well. <laughs> Rasulullah doesn't lie. Rasulullah doesn't lie. You know, today when Abu Ali and Abu Ahmed buys his house, we're like, Shrena Bat Amma. Shu Shrena Tam, well, block a bear's back, inshallah. Nahna Nawin and Dummer and Amil duplex. He's happy. He's happy he bought a house. Wallah, it could be on ribaha, it doesn't faze him. Why? Because uh, I own something, man. Yet yeah, a palace in paradise is passing me by every single day. And I let it go for free. So inshallah ta'ala, I don't want to take too much of your time. Inshallah ta'ala, we need to start these things. And wallahi, don't be shy, man. Go to the bookstore, grab, you know, the fortress of the Muslim. They have athkar for everything. Af, yani athkar for everything. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. Make salat ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be busy, man. You're on the train. I'm going to work. I'm in my car. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that sort of I can't really do anything. Make it. You don't even have to be in wudu. Make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clock up the figures. And set yourself goals. Set yourself goals, you know. Make istighfar. Make istighfar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, minimum, minimum. In one hadith he says 70, the other one says 100. These figures were to say that a lot. I used to make istighfar 100 times a day. Seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. So inshallah ta'ala, I'll leave you with this. And please pass this message on. If you go home now and you teach whatever you've learned today, then whenever that person says it, you will get the rewards. Invest. Go home and tell your daughter, go home and tell your wife, go home and tell your friends. Brother, did you know for every subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allah, everybody get a tree in paradise. Then he's going to start saying it. Then you get the tree. Then I get the tree. Then Shaykh Shadi gets my tree. Yeah, he taught me. Now I'm sharing it with you. And now you're sharing it with someone else. Shaykh, you got a lot of trees, man. <laughs> so inshallah ta'ala, my dear respected brothers, please, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salah in the masjid, please, don't, please do not leave these. The month of Ramadan, wallahi, is a golden opportunity. I want you to imagine the Shaykh is looking at me. His eyes are going red. I'm taking too long. I want you to imagine the Commonwealth Bank or a bank that open up their vaults. It's full of money. He says, look, you've got two hours. So you walk in. Yeah, I've got two hours, man. Yeah, good, yeah, good look around. Look, I'm feeling a bit tired. I might take a bit of a snooze and I'll spend the last hour. I'll go hard in the last hour. Now, Allah, if you told this story to anyone, be like, what's wrong with you, bro? You've only got two hours. Take it, man. Take what you can. And the month of Ramadan is a gift. The month of Ramadan is a gift. Don't let a moment slip you by. Don't let a second slip you by unless you're in one form of worship or another. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik jazakallah khair.